Hello everyone. Today let's talk about data lifecycle requirements. Think about data management requirements that every project needs to consider, whether your project uh, has to do with creating data, dealing with data, using data for analytical purposes, or managing business process. Every single project somehow touches data on the enterprise, so those requirements need to be captured. So today we will talk about data life cycle, where to find those data life cycle requirements, how to capture them, and if you would like to have more details and practice, check out my new course, Data Management and Analytics Fundamentals, that has lots of practice for you. So let's talk about data life cycle first. What happens to data as it cre is created and all the way until we destroy it? We go through several stages. We source the data, we prepare it, protect it and use it, share the results, and then we archive and destroy the data. Sourcing means we obtain the data either externally from other sources or we create, we enter it, or perhaps we measure it, we receive data signals, and then they have to be stored. Storage and preparations means collecting, storing, and preparing that data for usage. It may involve integration, cleaning, enriching, transformation. It may involve standardization and even doing some pre-calculation. So anything that you need to prepare to be able to use your data. And when we use our data, first of all, we need data to just operate day-to-day -day activities of the enterprise, to support business processes, to support our customer service. At the same time, we want to protect, monitor, and audit data usage. We want to ensure that only authorized uh, users have access to data. We also use the data to find some insights in it. So we will search, classify, explore, mine the data, model and analyze it and do a further analysis to make better decisions. That usage also leads us to sharing the results. When we use the data, sometimes we need to share, for example, insights or analytics with those who are interested in it could be management it could be people who are making day-to-day -day operational decisions it could be external customers could be regulators could be investors so publishing data sharing insights visualizing the data and even delivering data products to customers because part of your business may be creating a data product that then is sold to the customers and of course, eventually, the data needs to be archived, perhaps when it's no longer actively used but cannot be destroyed yet. So we may be removing data from active environments and storing it in an archive for historical purposes. And eventually, we destroy data. There should be always a plan on when the data can be destroyed safely, when it should be destroyed permanently. Because, of course, A, we don't want to store data indefinitely if it's no longer useful then it's just a waste, and B, we want to make sure we don't store the data for longer than necessary because it increases the risks. And if you think about all of this data life cycle, you will have requirements, data management requirements for every stage of this life cycle. So these are the capabilities that are required to source and collect and store and prepare and use and protect the data through its all life cycle. And this is what business analysis has to capture. Whether it's done by business analyst, data analyst, data architect, or most likely a combination of these roles, these people collectively with guidance, perhaps from a legal department and privacy department will define these data management requirements. There are many ways to do it, but what we have to remember is that it has to be done we don't just analyze processes, we also need to understand underlying data. If you don't define requirements for all of the stages in data life cycle, we're going to create a chaos. We're going to create messy data and the problems where the data is low quality or missing or duplicate or no longer trustworthy. And that, of course, is something that we don't wish for. So what are the, those different tools that you need to use and techniques that you may use to capture and to analyze data requirements. 
Of course, there's lots. We can't talk about all of them. But some of the examples, when you think about sourcing and collecting the data, you need to capture terms and definitions. You may want to have a glossary that clearly identifies what each attribute and what each data entity means. You may need a data dictionary, the data collection. You may define data flows, the diagrams that capture how the data flows and what are the different sources. Business rules for collecting data, for relationships between data, for validating data. So lots of things that you already can do here. Data mapping, if you need to transport the data from one system to another, from source to destination, you're going to have to map how the data in your source maps to different elements of data in your destination. Is the data model the same? Is the data structure the same? It may be different. So data mapping can be simple, can be complex, but it needs to be done whenever you move data from one information set to another. Here is an example of a very simple data mapping table. Of course, in real life, they're going to get more complicated, but you always think about the source and what are the different data elements at the source, what are the different data elements at the destination, and the mapping rules, the transformations, how this piece of data is going to end up in a destination field, does it need to be transformed? And this mapping or transformation rules are, of course, the hardest part of data mapping, right? And there's lots of different mapping transformations that may be required. You may need to change the type of the data, the format, the measurement units, the coding scheme, standardize it to a certain list of values, and even more complicated aggregation type of transformations. You may need to do some data modeling to understand the relationships between different data entities better. A data model is just an abstract representation of all of those real life objects and how they relate to one another. We always start analysis with conceptual modeling, and then it can be developed into logical and eventually into physical models. But any a real world um, information can be represented as a conceptual model. And that's a very useful exercise on any project, can be done again by business analyst, data architect, data analyst. We do want to though create it at the conceptual level and develop later because it gives us a very good understanding of the data. So if you want to learn more about conceptual modeling, I link another video where I'm just practicing that and you can watch that video. Things like data protection and privacy requirements, understanding how you need to classify data, what are the different levels of access, um, how do you need to collect consent for storing personal data, how personal identifiable information needs to be protected, the right to be forgotten, and all of those aspects of protecting data are important. Of course, as always, if you are a business analyst, you always go to the right stakeholders for the different groups of requirements. Here, you're going to discuss it with your security officers, with your privacy officers, but those are also important requirements. Uh, without going through everything, and you can uh, sign up for my video, video course if you would like to really study this in more detail. But here is a quick summary for you of all the various data management requirements for different stages of the life cycle and the tools and techniques that you may apply to, um, to capture those requirements. You will be thinking about uh, data quality rules, how to validate data when it's being collected, uh, mapping data, integration requirements, reporting and analytics requirements, what are the different things that need to be measured, what are the important KPIs that need to be delivered in operational, in real-time reporting to people who manage day-to-day -day operations to help them do their jobs, how do we aggregate the data, how do we want to present insights from that data and who are the users, and of course protecting data archiving, retention, and eventual disposal. So that is a quick summary for you. For more, go to my course, go to my other videos, and remember, every project will have data management requirements.